two for one. Family. <laughs> I'm a farmer. <laughs> Do what nature does with it already. Just not let it all rot. <laughs> oh! I was... <sighs> you must have just got this tub. <laughs> but seriously. Yeah. They'll both kind of be like, oh no, everything is okay, blah, blah, blah. You're looking for crayfish, you're not even fishing. <laughs> I promise I'll tell you about the day when the cottonwoods blew and it snowed in May. But first, let's take it back to Mother's Day, when Allie and I brought our mamas to lunch and I bought Mama Trout a peach tree that I still need to go pick up in Old Blue so she can plant it in the yard of the little red house. And I checked in on my old van where the Volkswagen guru had bought himself a new toy. And back at the cabin, Allie had brought our cat Mowgli for his first impressions as he had never been there before. This? By now, the hills were alive and full, with paint drops of spring buds speckled throughout. There was a lot of blue skies and sunshine, but the mornings and nights were very cold. In fact, we had the wood stove going almost every day in May. <laughs> what do you think? It's chilly. Mid-May, it's almost late May, and uh, it's about 6 a.m. and it is cold. Oh, gee. See, it's okay. <laughs> and Mama Trout stopped by with Hudson and did some trimming, and we showed her all the updates to the inside. It stimulates them. Yeah. You know, like a quarter of an inch at an angle above So after some testing and a lot more research and thinking, I came to the conclusion that it would be easier to just have a propane fridge as opposed to try and keep this electric fridge running 24 hours because the power system is doing okay, but it's kind of given me some problems and I just don't trust it. I don't want to have to make sure it's constantly charged, especially when we don't have any solar set up yet and we don't have good solar opportunity anyway. So I'm gonna do a new fridge and figure I'm gonna do a dedicated gas line to it so that I can just have one fridge tank and easily keep track of how much it uses. Hey, Mouse. <laughs> All right. We know it. And so we took it easy on Mowgli's first overnight, and he slowly settled into this foreign land that would soon become his kingdom.
And right in mid-May, I got old blue back after an exhaust leak fix and was feeling anxious to put her to work as we had a boatload ahead of us. You are acting ridiculous, Mel. <laughs> His eyes are completely black. Oh, oh. you just need to <laughs> Now. I love seeing flowers on the countertop. Me too. And they I should, got some you should put them here. <gasps> Hi. That's a Mao boy Williams. And for the first time in his life, Mao was putting his paws on the raw earth. Smell this. We got another peach coming out. Oh, yeah? Yep. Hey, Mal. Hello, Toad. This looks like mushrooms. Look. And we stopped by Jack's, where no one was there except John's old truck named Pop, who appeared to be downtrodden and parked for good. Poor Pop. So we got to work moving things around and getting ready for a new stretch of life. Four feet on the stripes in the Alabama highway. Piping, the tubes that I used on the water system here were <clears throat> completely inadequate and one of them that leads to the cold water inlet on the tank expanded. I knew it was going to be a disaster and then <laughs> Ali was here yeah, alone. Last night when I was here by myself, probably around midnight, I heard the system kick on and I got out of bed and the entire floor was soaked with five gallons worth of water. So that's an easy fix. Replace it with PEX, should be no problem, and get the system back up and running. Whoa. PEX is so easy to work with, it just cuts like nobody's business. You don't even need to deburr it. Schedules jam packed. Allie and I were both in and out of the cabin on different days, sleeping there as much as we could, working in our small offices in our Milltown apartment when we had to, and doing our best to keep everything balanced. Mm -hmm. 
This thing is from the 1890s. And on this morning, I made my first ever cup of coffee with the grinder and the teapot and the stove and the coffee maker that I had pieced together over the years. And to sip on that while I planned out some client work was a dream come true. I just want to take a minute to thank this video sponsor, which is On the Road Again Bags. These bags are made in Massachusetts by a friend of mine named Mary. She's an extremely hardworking woman. She does all of this herself. She made this entire brand. She makes every bag by hand. These bags are some of the strongest bags I've ever used. They're made entirely from upcycled materials. So she buys leftover materials that would otherwise sit in warehouses and turns them into products. That's actually where the name comes from, On the Road Again. You're taking materials that were sitting around doing nothing and putting them on the road again. I just love a dependable product. The handles right here, these are old seatbelts. The mesh, I believe it's mesh that used to be on dump trucks that would cover the dirt, so you know that this is strong. And then we've got marine grained vinyl on the bottom here, the stuff that would be used on boat seats. That's ready to withstand the weather. I mean, this bag seriously can withstand a beating. We loaded it with firewood when we went out to the island. If you do get it dirty, you can just wash it out with the hose. This is an honest work bag that also looks good. I've told you guys about Mary before on this channel and it really makes me happy to help a small business owner get her products out there. She puts her heart and soul into every bag she makes. She has a full-time job and she does this on the side. This is her dream. Every time you buy a bag, it makes a big difference in her life. Gets her one step closer to that dream. This right here is the Liberty Tote. I believe this mesh was used on the dump trucks that were hauling debris away from 9-11. She has a bunch of different totes with all different colors. So if you're interested in Mary's bags, you can get 20% off her entire store if you use the code Brown Trout and the link is in the video description. So a big thank you to Mary for sponsoring this video and for supporting this channel. And now back to the story. This morning, I also went for my first ever run along the old road at the cabin, which is something I'd been dying to do since I bought the place. These past years, the cabin has been a place that you come to work and get things done, not a place of rest and enjoyment. But little by little, I was getting tastes of the lifestyle that was to come. As I worked on the gas lines for the fridge, Allie came back with her sister, who helped pick up sticks around the property. the June bugs for the first time.
and your leaves make such a difference. It took one of the tulip ones. Oh yeah, they do. There's a spider in here. Ah, uh, uh, it's on my fingers. I let him go. I'm purring. <laughs> oh, Mouchy. My sweet boy. Oh, my <laughs> Hi, Tiny. Gonna be a lot of these kind of trips. Throwing out junk, reorganizing things, clearing it up here. Gonna take a long time, there's no way around it. But every trip counts. The first time I noticed the cottonwoods was when we set out for our yearly spring tradition of cooking hot dogs and beans on the island. They were lightly floating through the air, and I thought it curious that they were in these thick woods, as I had never seen them near the cabin before. <laughs> And so we set off under the dreaming tree, just as the sun slipped away. to light the fire, we realized we forgot the matches back on shore. bottom of the rocks near the wood stove. This is about the warmest I've ever been here. Thank you. 
wasn't long after that that I finally nailed down a time with my best friend John to give him the laptop I bought him for writing and spend the day fishing and catching up. for him to come out, I admired the blooms on the lilacs and the apple tree. Yeah. Up this way, you hear the other near. I was talking to Marie and Jack so bad, like, I was like, just need a black cup. Yeah. Oh, this will help you with work, too. Yeah, just if I can, like, keep everything. Oh, it's got a different <laughs> color. <laughs> it came like that. I thought it was kind of funny. thought you'd like it. I love it. <laughs> Remember to save your work, John. <laughs> like the beginning of your life. <laughs> you must have just got this took. I did. That is an, an insane ID. <laughs> it wasn't the picture I wanted. Let's put it that way. Oh, buddy. First of all, I had been running in and out to my car to get shit that I was missing. So I'm like out of breath. It's freezing outside. It's 100 degrees inside the DMV. So I have like three coats on. I'm just like <laughs> sweating, just like so hot. My hair was all over the place. And the lady was so funny. She was just like, Took six pictures of me. Seriously? And she's like, maybe just scrub your hair down a little bit. <laughs> she was helping you yeah, out. Yeah, she's like, honestly, you just need to shave that off. You have nice eyes, but you need to shave that off. <laughs> like, yeah. You have nice eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a riot, all right. Oh, well, sure. Oh, yeah, there's no smoke. Nothing like no power steering. <laughs> Nothing like it. Can you imagine all the old men back in the day? Ah, the old lady. Like, no worries. Yes. That's what's going on. That's awful.
John caught a few natives, and I had a strike or two. And we found some incredible water we had never been to, where the honeysuckles were in bloom. And to end the day, we drove to the edge of his grandfather's farm. And part of the family by making this place just do what nature does with it already. Just not let it all rot. <laughs> Both in this weird situation in life. Honestly. Like seriously. Yeah. They'll both kind of be like, oh no, everything's okay, blah, blah, blah. But then I, I bet you get one drink of wine into both of them. Father. <laughs> 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 Husband. Wait, that's a hilarious. She's smarter up here than most people. You know? That's yeah. really cool. To say. Shit, that's awful. Yeah, it sounds worse than you, but they got it categorized as bad as you got it. <laughs> He's like, Jesus, they, mine's not that bad. It should be in a different color. Wow, look at that spot right there. <laughs> that's a little weird to me. What? There's a clearing there, too. Or did I clear all that? I guess I cleared all that. Yeah. That's beautiful up there now. <laughs> I haven't been up there. You want to take a walk? Yeah, sure. What to learn from. <laughs> I can't even look at it. How could you ever take a picture of it? Yeah, all right. I know what you're doing. Oh, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's a dual do, one for you and one for me, too. Do. <laughs> That's true. Just anything I guess mom asked me to do, you know, trim the blueberries. And so we walked up to the beaver pond at the top of the land, passing through electric fences where we tested our pain tolerance as kids. We talked about the future and the past, and we kicked old tires. And never were John and I happier than when we were roaming forests together. And we emerged just before dark, the way our mothers taught us. You see all the cottonwoods? This is wild. I don't even know where there's cottonwoods around here. All right. This is the porch now. So I was looking up couches for the cabin porch and they want $1,600 for something like this, so... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I can build this pretty easily out of old beams. And I think we have some scrap lumber over there somewhere, enough to do it. And then I got these couch cushions at Home Depot for 60 bucks each, so all in. I'll be about two hundred dollars, something like that. I've seen this. <laughs> now 
on the day that the cottonwoods blew, we had planned to do computer work, but something drew us out of that Milltown apartment and down to the cabin to begin a change that had been about five years coming. Both the cotton and the sunlight were on and off in bursts. You'd get sucked into work for a moment, and then a cloud would break, and heaven would spill out. Whenever it happened, I would look at Allie with a huge smile and tell her how I had never felt a prettier moment. Her and I there working hard together in the rosy light of a cottonwood dream. For the last many years, I forgot about the cottonwoods until I saw them here or there in a parking lot or an unsuspecting place. And I always said to myself, Next year, I'll take the time to go capture them in their full glory and do them justice. But I never got around to it. And this year, they came and found us down by the river. I could come up with theories about where they came from, how far they traveled, and how they made their way down through the thick hemlock forests against all odds. But some things are better left alone. <laughs> so fortunately I gotta go edit today all day Allie's gonna stay back finish the cedar shakes on the porch and by the end of tonight the porch should be fully set up this is my rocking chair made from a local guy, he made the chairs in the cabin too. I've been waiting for about two years to be able to sit in this on the cabin porch and 
Tonight, it all comes together. And as I drove out, I smelled the fresh cut scent of the year's first haying. And after a long day's work, I came back to a beautiful sight. Wow, you did such a good job down by the pipe and everything. It looks like a home. And it felt like one too. Even though we had plenty of work left to do, every little thing we accomplished made it less like a job site and more like an escape. of how sweet life can be, I'll think back to the day when the cottonwoods blew. <laughs> 